For the second time in three years, the BSC Mystics volleyball team is Region 13 champs. We'll show you how they got there, and we'll hear from head coach Jenny Walsh. The First Lady of North Dakota sat down to talk about the third annual Recovery Reinvented Conference being held at the Bismarck Event Center next week. And finally, it's that time to start thinking about registering for spring semester classes. Say it ain't so. This, this is Mysticast. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Robert McKaylee. And I'm Roger Marks. After a successful regular season, which saw them finish as Mondag champions, the BSC Mystics volleyball team hosted the Region 13 tournament. Having home field advantage turned out to be a big part for the Mystics. On Saturday afternoon, they hosted Miles City Community College and it was pretty much Mystics all day long. First game, Bismarck State College up 14-9, and after some back and forth, Mystics get a huge spike from Megan Anderson and go up by six. Mystics now one point from a victory in the first set. Ali Glauser serves up and Miles City struggles receiving the serve and hits, it hits the ceiling and falls. Mystics win 25-20. The Mystics would go on to win in the second set on quick reactions of Megan Anderson who gets the block and has the put back over the heads of the Pioneers. The Mystics would go on to win three games and sweep Miles City. On Sunday afternoon, they hosted the Wildcats from North Coast State College of Science who beat Dakota Community Technical College in the other semifinal. The Mystics would jump out to an early lead when Becca Nitsch serves up the ace. Mystics up 3-1. Still first set and Mystics need just one more point when Macy Coons gets the block and Mystics go up 1-0. Second set and it's Macy Coons who gets the floater to fall. Mystics win the second set and continue their winning ways. Finally the third set, Mystics would force the side out and let the celebration begin. The Mystics win the third set 25-20 and earn the Region 13 championship. After some close games, the Mystics volleyball team celebrated their accomplishment. I just want to let them know about how proud I am of them and the work that they have put in to the season um, and into each other. And, you know, we always say that we want to be accountable to each other and that we're in this together. And so I am just very proud of them for, you know, really living that mantra every day, not only in practice, but in the weight room and in the locker room and at study hall as well. The volleyball team weren't the only ones this past weekend to come away with some hardware. The women's basketball team won the preseason conference basketball tournament. The opening round, the Mystics defeated Williston State College Tetons 76-51. In the semifinals, they knocked off the Wildcats of NDSCS 66-59 in a close match. In the championship game, they faced off against the Royals of Lake Region State College and won with a score of 95-71. This is the second annual preseason tournament the Mystics took home, second place last year. Congrats to all the champions from Bismarck State College. Health Sciences held a tour of their facilities to showcase the improvements made in teaching the next generation of professionals. On October 9th, the new facility along College Drive opened its newly renovated doors to the public. A number of staff, faculty and students were in attendance, as well as health professionals. Dr. Larry C. Skoken showed the brimming enthusiasm before the public. As you tour, you'll see the amazing facility, the equipment, uh, which of course is the future healthcare workforce that uh, we'll be training here at BSC. The students use these moments with the public to showcase skills learned in their academic careers. One of these students, Mikhail Hawks, stood before the attendees to showcase highlights of the program's return to the home campus. The facility offers my classmates and me more learning opportunities, as well as a great environment. We go to class in newly built classrooms, study areas, and of course, the OR lab. The Health Sciences Building currently hosts the Nursing, Paramedic Technology, Surgical Technology, Emergency Medical Technician, and the Certified Nursing Assistant programs. Phase 2 of the project will add the Medical Laboratory Technician program, with completion to be done sometime next year. Did you know that alcohol and drug use is the number one social issue in North Dakota? Daniel Burbank joins us to tell us more on what's being done to help those in need. Roger, the road to recovery from addiction can be a difficult one. I recently sat down with First Lady of North Dakota, Catherine Burgum, to talk about her personal struggles with addiction and why her upcoming event, Recovery Reinvented, is so important. Catherine Burgum, thank you so much for joining us. And as we mentioned uh, just a, a little while ago, you know, your travel was uh, pretty good here, right? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I'm excited to be here with you today. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you. Well, I'm here today to um, promote this fabulous, fantastic event that we have been doing for three years. This will be the third year. It's an event that gets people together to really focus on eliminating the stigma of addiction. So what is different this year compared to previous years? Well, 
There are a few different things, but we have also kind of doubled down on what has worked the last two years. We're asking them to submit the videos um, and just talk a little bit about how addiction, recovery, stigma has affected their lives. And so that'll be super fun because then we're going to play those videos throughout the day. And that should be a powerful moment. Now, 17 years of, of your recovery as well. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting emotional the way you said that. It's just and well, it's it's, it's it is a powerful thing. Mm. It's and and you know sharing your story uh, has obviously helped many people and will continue to help many people. Uh, but um, talk to me about your firsthand account with addiction. Well, um, you know, I it started when I was in high school. I had my first blackout when I was in high school. And then I struggled basically with my alcohol addiction over the next, you know, 30 years of my life. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much for being here. Um, can you tell us a, a little bit about when Recovery Reinvented is and, and just quick synopsis of what, what sure. people can expect? Yep. So it is November 12th, Tuesday, November 12th in Bismarck at the Bismarck Event Center from 8 to 5. And again, it's free, free lunch, free coffee, um, but you have to register so we can track everyone. Okay, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome to Bismarck State College and and um, good luck on, on the continued road to recovery. Thank you so much, Daniel. For more information on Recovery Reinvented, visit recoveryreinvented.com. If you'd like to watch the full interview, that's on our Facebook page and YouTube page. Just search Mysticast. Roger? Thanks, Daniel. Bismarck State College hosted their job fair this past month. Over 100 employers attended this year's fall fair. The main point of the job fair is to connect students with employers, to make sure that students get a chance to come over and find out about career opportunities in the program areas that they're interested in or that they're completing here at BSC. A wide variety of fields were represented. They included those from finance, agriculture, business, healthcare, energy, and cybersecurity. That BSC puts this on, honestly, because although I don't go here anymore, I'm still technically an alumni because I graduated from here, and I love BSC. So I'm glad they're doing this because it gives everybody an opportunity to um, get a job, I suppose. You know, Students that miss the job fair can visit the Mystics Advising and Counseling Center to sign up for Job Seekers Network which is a service that allows students to connect with employers in between job fair events. Bismarck State College President Dr. Larry C. Skokin announced that he will be retiring effective July 1st, 2020. Here to join me today is Dr. Dan Leingang of the Presidential Search Committee. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank you. So, as we enter this period, first off, tell me, what are you doing? What is your specific purpose within the search committee? Sure. Well, I'm the vice president for academic affairs here at Bismarck State College. And my role on the search committee is I'm the, one of the co-chairs for the committee. So um, from BSC's point of view, I will represent the college. The other co-chair is from our State Board of Higher Education, uh, Mr. Tim Mahalik. And so the two of us will be leading the team as we go through this process. Excellent. So what exactly are you and the rest of the committee looking for in a new president? Well, to put it simply, we want another Larry Scogan, right? I mean, that's the messaging we're hearing from a lot of our campus, uh, from the community. Uh, really, they're looking for someone who is authentic, um, who is connected to the college, but to the community and sees how those connections can benefit our students. Um, really focus on student success uh, for that individual to come in and lead our campus forward. Um, we're looking for someone um, from, and this is feedback from our constituents, uh, we're looking for someone who understands higher education and how it's changing as we go forward in time. And so there's a lot happening right now in our campus. We have a lot of momentum, a lot of change, but it's all positive. So we need someone who's going to be able to step in and continue with that um, to allow us to continue to move forward. So they're going to have to start sprinting right away as they jump on board, and we're looking for that right person to do that. And the community feels the same way too, and the student body? Absolutely. Our, our community is such a huge support supporter of BSC. Um, they're very, they have a lot of positive things to say about how we're connecting with them, and they're saying the same thing. They want someone who is understanding of the needs of our area, um, they also 
wanted to have someone who's connected to the community. Uh, Dr. Scogan is very involved in a lot of different areas, um, very strong with the athletics and the, in our arts programming. They see that and they want a president who is going to maintain that connection to the community. And so that's what we're hearing from our uh, external stakeholders, our community stakeholders. All right, excellent. And as we continue to go forward through this transition process, what should we as the people in the community, the students, as well as the staff, faculty, and you guys, what should we all be looking forward to in the future sure. with the search? Well, we're blessed, first of all, to have Dr. Skogan on campus all the way through to his retirement in June. Um, that's not always the case for a lot of institutions that have presidential leadership change. So that's a positive for us. What you can expect to see is that the committee is going to begin our work. Uh, we just had our first meeting last week. The work will continue. We will be receiving candidates, uh, applications, and then doing work as a committee to isolate and break down the candidates to a reasonable number that we will then bring to campus for interviews. Those interviews will happen somewhere around the early part of March. So targeted right now is uh, March 3rd through the 5th. So everyone watching this right now should be really connected to those dates because that's when those candidates will be on campus. We will have open forums. We will have you know, the interviews with the different stakeholder groups. Uh, student government will have a voice in this. Our faculty senate, our staff senate, all employees, the community will all have a say in this. And these are the days that we'll be bringing these individuals to campus. So mark that down, early March, most likely the 3rd through the 5th of March. All right, well look forward to those days and look forward as the search for the next president continues. Back to you, Roger. On Saturday, November 2nd, North Dakota celebrated its 130th anniversary of statehood. North Dakota was the nation's 39th state and had a population of about 170,000 when they entered the Union. Today, North Dakota has just over 780,000 total residents. Most of the snow has come and gone, but the cold temperatures signal that winter is close and that means dangerous roads. We are now joined by John Wingenbach, who shares some tips and suggestions on how to handle being prepared for the roads. That's right, guys. As most of us know, North Dakota roads are not something that be taken lightly when the weather gets bad. Whether you're traveling through town, short distances between towns, or you're on a long car trip out of town, it's always important to drive safely. When the snow melts, it creates hazardous roads. If you plan on going anywhere when the weather turns for the worse, plan ahead and be sure to drive slowly. If you're heading out of town, before or after a blizzard, be sure to check online for road conditions. If you see another car on the side of the road, try and help them. Jumper cables are always handy to have in case another car needs help. And if you're the one in the predicament, you should always try to call for help or for 911. To check North Dakota road conditions online, go to www.dot.nd.gov slash travel info. Back to you guys. Registration for the spring semester of 2020 has come up quickly, and being prepared for the process is crucial for continuing your future at BSC. The Mystics Advising and Counseling Career Center, academic records, and advisors are here to help any student in need of assistance during the registration process. They will answer any questions you have about your class schedule and they will help you find the answers if they are unsure. I would recommend them to talk with their advisor because they are assigned to their program so they're more knowledgeable in that area and they get them on the right track and keep them on the right track in order to graduate on time. Priority registration for current students starts on November 1st through the 15th. Students are assigned a specific date and time in which they can start the process. Students are encouraged to meet with their academic advisor and can help with class schedules. We just want everybody to have a good time at BSC and enjoy yourself. So if you have any questions, please contact us anytime. The popular fast food chain Chick-fil-A has announced that a location is set to open in Bismarck in 2021. The store will be located next to Kirkwood Mall on South 3rd Street, just north of Bismarck Expressway. The store will be locally owned and operated, and like all Chick-fil-A restaurants, they will be closed on Sundays. Bird watching is a relaxing hobby that has people of all ages outside and enjoying nature. As the weather gets colder, only a few brave souls dare to stay. Birding, as a hobby, impacts people like Marlene Anderson, the BSC Director of Library Services. She was happy to share her experience of birding with Janelle Masters, the former Dean of Bismarck State College. We went to Mackenzie Slough, which is only about 10 miles away. And 
it was a beautiful spring evening, so, but I, what I remember mostly was the sounds. This great sounds, lots of yellow-headed blackbirds, and there were so many that you could just see with the naked eye because you're right in the middle of the slough, basically, on that road. But it was fun. It was really fun. Visit your local refuge to pick up on the peaceful pastime. Speaking of birds, wasn't Ellie trying to grow something in the station office? Yeah, about that. He's still here. Yeah, he's been here for like 481 hours. And he hasn't moved? No, he's just photosynthesis, man. Poor guy, he needs to just go home. Don't you think we should tell Elliot this is a bad idea? I mean, he wasted almost half a semester waiting for that bird seed to grow. No way! As a matter of fact, I quite appreciate Elliot's company as I'm busy working on the Mystician newspaper, our college's very own newspaper publication. That's everything we had scheduled for today. If you see something you like or don't, let us know how we are doing. Or if you have an idea for a story, please contact us at bscmysticianeditor at bismarckstate.edu. Be sure to like us on Facebook and tune into the mix at bscmyx.com to hear your favorite BSU radio DJs. Thanks for watching. Until next time.